Okay. I think I'm on here. Okay. There we are. Uh, I can figure out a lot of things on the computer and whatever else, but uh, some things are just don't come too easily for me. So sorry to everybody out there for the having to start over here, I guess. Um, let me I'll mute this one here. Okay. Everybody wants to come over to this one now. <laughs> Give me a couple minutes to come over here. Um, I, I did write down a lot of your questions, so we will be getting to that here. Um, <laughs> it's what's happening is I'm going in, and when I schedule an event, for some odd reason, when I go to get into it, then I can't, uh, which is really odd. Like it'll come up and it'll say, um, you know, like it says custom or quick or whatever else, and, and, and it's just kind of light. And collar and I can't click on either one so I have no idea if it's something set wrong uh, I, I'm I'm good with video editing I can handle that part of technology because it doesn't change uh, really once you learn it, it it works pretty good but internet stuff YouTube especially I mean I've been on here since 2008 and the the amount that this website has changed is just it's insane. I don't even remember what the original YouTube looked like anymore. It was, you know, way back in 2008. Um, I was more active in 2009, but anyways. Uh, so, okay. Um, what I want to do here, I want to start out. I, one of you posted a video, a link to a video. In a, hi, everybody, by the way. Um, you, one of you posted a link to a video um, on the whole some big mega church guy or whatever else and i want to play that video see if i can do this without messing something up <laughs> uh yeah i'll do this one here okay i think i have it right here yeah all right i'm gonna do this video quick i'm gonna start about one hour and about just an hour and eight minutes into the thing and um so i'll play a little bit of this i'm going to comment on it it was the edict was made bow down to the image or burn and you know the story bow to the number by the way it's kind of cool right the nebuchadnezzar statue does yeah. anybody know how high the pedestal was that it was placed upon remember it was an image of a man right okay I didn't see this part, but uh, first of all, it doesn't say it was an image of a man. It's just an image. And I believe it's an obelisk, actually, if you look at the measurements of it. But what would this guy know? And the Bible number of a man is what number? Six. Six. And how tall was the pedestal that that statue stood upon? 66 feet, the Bible says. Kind of fun. 66 feet, number six of man. Uh, why would that be fun, weirdo? There's this image, you don't bow. If you don't bow, you're going to burn. Well, that's going to, history is going to repeat itself in that, in that way. But I love what Don said. Thank you, Don, for the accuracy of it. Because what I'm about to say might freak people out. You will have to willingly take that mark. You will have to willingly take the mark. Why do I say that? Because you and I were sitting at Calvary Chapel back in the 70s and 80s. Yep. When people freaked out, when credit cards mm -hmm. got a magnetic strip on the back of them, they never used to have magnetic strips. Pastor Chuck held it up and said, look how much we're advancing. And he said, well, you know, we're heading in that direction. Then the microchip came in. Remember the chip? Oh, oh my gosh, look how thin it is. It's in my credit card. We're going to get it in the hand and we're going to wake up one morning and it's, mm -hmm. we're chipped. We're chipped. Now your dog is chipped, your cat's chipped. Okay, now let me just point out uh, something here. These mega churches, these modern Christians, they laugh at things that would freak people out years ago. Um, and through mockery, uh, you know, the Bible says fools make a mock at sin, and that's what these guys will do. They will make they will make jokes about something that people should be taking seriously. Microchips are very serious. 
And you're going to hear him say that you can actually take it here. There's some babies that are born in Europe uh, where the children are chipped in those areas. Just because you're chipped, there's some U.S. Special Forces that are chipped. This has nothing to do with the Antichrist. Listen, the uh -huh. entire U.S. economy, believer, uh, 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 citizens could be chipped and it has nothing to do with the Antichrist. Do you understand that? You need to break through that thing. Who needs a chip? I don't even eat chips. It's, it's too close to it. Don't think like that. You will have to say, I, I decide on his number to be the prefix to my number. I want him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download right. I'm going to download right now. I'm going to swear allegiance to him, and I'm going to get the mark. Boom, I'm in. And you will have to bow and worship to him. So hypothetically, hypothetically, there could be 50 more years before yes. the Antichrist ever comes. Mm. And then 10 years to stop human trafficking, drugs, and, and uh, illegal immigration. <laughs> stop drugs? Are you kidding me? Uh, a microchip in the hand is going to stop drugs? What an idiot. I'll say some more here when I'm done with this. Every American, everybody in North America gets chipped. You are not accepting the Antichrist. Do you understand that? I'd go get chipped, and I would just go, and I'd, I'd go to work. <gasps> you have to bow to You will have to accept his allegiance. Okay. That's enough of that. Um, all right. Uh, pretty stinking disgusting um, that the guy would say that. I mean, my word. I think, honestly, I think any man that wears uh, skinny jeans should be horsewhipped, but that's another issue. Um, but, okay, first of all, let me make a point here. Um, the credit card thing and the magnetic strip on the back, it's not part of your body. Okay, point number one, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. No government official or anybody else should ever come along and tell you what to do with your body. Okay, that's very dangerous. They can't tell you as a Christian, you need to refuse vaccination, mandatory vaccination, right? If, if they say it's voluntary and you want to get one and whatever else, I would strongly recommend against that because they're it's poison that they're putting into your bloodstream, but whatever, okay? But if it's mandatory and they're telling you what to do with your body, eh, no, wrong. I don't think so. Microchips in the body. Lord only knows what kind of health effects it, that would be you know, being connected to Wi-Fi and whatever else. No way, no way. But then you'd have the, the control factor and everything else. Absolutely not. You do not take a microchip. And for a guy to stand there and say that he's a pastor or whatever else, Bible prophecy teacher, whatever the loser is, I don't even know who he is, honestly. No way, no way. Guy's false. I mean, it's just, it's insane. But see, this is how it's going to be brought in. It's going to be brought in through the modern churches. Remember. So, so important to get here. What do people do with the Antichrist in the future? Future, The whole world will worship the beast. Where are they going to worship him? Mega churches, church buildings, right? They're going to worship the image of the beast. What do most church buildings have in them? Big, huge television screens. It all lines up. It's all perfect. It will be the churches that implement the mark of the beast. So uh, to, to compare it to... You know, a voluntary credit card that people can take and people can, you know, it's got a strip on it and whatever else and things. And and see, they're slowly implementing. It. Again, they're going to slowly implement the mark of the beast. And, and, you know, what he said, I will agree with what he said in the sense of the mark of the beast is three things. It's taking the mark, worshiping the beast and his image. But the whole thing is, if you already have the microchip in you, well, guess what? You're already there. And see, these church pastors are going to say, oh, come on, no big deal. Come on, let's, let's not make a big issue of it. So, anyhow. Um, so, that was an interesting thing there. I just wanted to make a video about that, kind of go off on that a little bit there, just to kind of war, warn people and things. It's the, the church buildings. Uh, you know, I, I, I have a very strong attitude against church buildings because I've seen what they are. And... Um, I care about people that are in those buildings. Uh, I want to see people come out of them because it's it just they're getting so bad. You should, you know, any arguments that you could make for church buildings, you know, <laughs> bad, bad, bad news a long time ago.
uh, people should have been getting out of them things. But anyhow, um, that's one thing. Another thing, and I'm just going to throw this out there. I'd like to hear, you know, people's response to it. Um, I don't know if you heard, um, I think it was just a few days ago, Donald Trump passed an executive order um, about an EMP attack. We need to harden the grid for, an, you know, in, in case of cyber attacks and whatever else. And uh, I just thought that was interesting because EMP means electromagnetic pulse. And basically uh, it can happen from a solar flare from the sun, they say, a Carrington event. There was this thing back in, I think it was late 1800s, early 1900s, where there was a big solar flare and it fried all the telegraph wires. But most people didn't have electricity back then. So it wasn't like a major crisis. But now, um, you know, now it's a, it's a big deal because people are so dependent on electricity. But uh, I had this thought. I do believe in the time of Jacob's trouble, there's, there's a point where they're actually gnawing their tongues because of great pain. They're, everything's pitch black darkness. So I do believe that there will be a EMP or something that, that wipes out the electronic grid in the future. But I had this thought, and I don't know, just see what people think. What if there would be an EMP immediately following the catching up of the body of Christ. I thought, hmm, because then they could totally cover it up. There would be no communication. I don't know. <laughs> Just an interesting thing. Uh, uh, let's see here. I did write down some, some comments from the other stream thing there. Um, let's check something here quick. Okay. And delete that. Uh, so I covered that. Um, why is Acts 8.37 omitted in the new versions? Well, the main reason is because of this. Let me just show here. We have two different Greek texts. Okay. This is known here in my right hand. On your left side of the screen, I guess it would be. This is a Textus Receptus, right? This is a Nessel Alon Greek text. They're not the same, okay? This one is ba based on less than 1% percent of extant Greek manuscripts. This one is based on 99 plus percent of extant Greek manuscripts. This one is used primarily by the Catholic Church and was, you know, the manuscripts, the corrupt manuscripts that they have, you know, that they hold on to underlie this one this one here is more the greek orthodox tradition right so that's that's and and this one does not have x837 this one does okay that's the, the main thing there um of course i saw somebody had answered and they said well x837 the catholics want to take it out because it's a very strong proof text against baptismal regeneration the thing of baptizing an infant um so and that's very true um so yeah, uh, it's it's just you know the the if you don't understand the issue, the, there were Gnostics and other heretics that basically decided to rewrite the Bible, pretty much as it was being written, um, and you, that's why you see Paul writing at one point in time, and he says, "We are not as many which you know corrupt the Word of God," and. Uh, and so, you know, it was it was happening back then in the first century. Again, I've talked about this in some of my videos, but they were changing the word of God as soon as it was being written, different heretics and things. And a lot of these heretical texts came down through the years and things, and they now underlie the uh, Nestle Lalonde text. And so that's why the new versions read differently than the King James Bible. Um, so, yeah. Um, Another question I saw on the other thing there was, uh, where can I find Bible-believing Christians outside of church buildings? Uh, well, that's getting very difficult. Um, you can meet some online on this channel over there in the comments and things. Um, you know, it's actually kind of an interesting thing because uh, what will happen is when you start to talk to people, you know, a good way to do it is actually put some bumper magnets on your vehicle about the Bible or whatever else and see people's reactions. And I've seen people now literally come up and they'll say, Hey, praise the Lord for your bumper magnets there. And you can start a conversation with them. And, and um, so that's a good way to meet them. Um, 
you know, witnessing and things, uh, you can actually you know, help to create some Bible believing Christians. So that's a good thing. Uh, let's see if I can go in here. Just thinking I probably ought to shut the other one down if it's still there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's different ways to meet Bible believing Christians. Okay, I guess the other one got shut down. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, another question I saw is, is all heavy metal music satanic? Yes. Um, and the reason for that, and again, here is a, a study. I came out with my study, um, the devil and music or the devil's music. I forget what I called it originally. Um, and basically there's three elements to music okay you have harmony you have melody and you have rhythm okay all three elements have to be there all right but if you have a primary primary emphasis on rhythm it is very dangerous because it you know basically basically elevates the flesh good example would be sporting events you don't want symphony orchestra you want sort of a uh, loud beat be it rap music rock music whatever else it gets the adrenaline up um when heathen peoples go into war what do they do does somebody get out and start playing a beautiful you know number on a violin or they bring out a piano and they play a you know whatever else uh, no they beat the drums they get the drum boom, 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 you know like that and it gets your it gets you it's faster than your natural heart rhythm which elevates the flesh it gets you extremely aggressive okay i've been to rock concerts i've been to heavy metal concerts um, mosh pits the whole deal and people fist fighting and things why because of the music um, look at the, I mean you, it's so easy just go and look at a concert of you know Metallica and then a, a concert of the London Philharmonic Orchestra look at the look at the different crowds one is sitting there calmly and enjoying the beautiful music and just taken in by this um, these amazing sounds the other one is just up and down and, you know, and you know, all that stuff. Again, I was a hardcore heavy metal guy back in the, you know, many years ago. So uh, you can't, you cannot take um, something that is, that is like that. You cannot take that and say, I'm going to use this somehow for the Lord. You can't do it. Um, and again, you, you study what is the history of heavy metal and rock music well it goes back to voodoo it goes back to witchcraft it's it's again heathen types of music and so it comes down and then they say well we can make it christian and i used to be a major advocate for that stuff and it's just a lie and um there's a uh, website i think it's av1611.org let me just check real quick dr terry watkins and um there's some issues. The, the Dial of Truth Ministries, av1611.org is what it's called. And he has some really good stuff on uh, the Bible version issue, as well as um, uh, rock music and things like that. And you would be shocked by some of the uh, supposed Christian rock bands that are out there. Um, it's just, it's not good to listen to. And I mean, I know I, I was seeing a lot of you in the comments were saying about you go to the grocery store and it's just so vexing. I mean, we, we went to this store just the other day, grocery store. I, mean, I don't remember grocery stores doing this when I was young. You know, they played more soothing music. But, uh, you know, we went to this grocery store, and it was like they were playing, you know, just song after song after song from back when I was in high school. And, I mean, it was just torture. It was just terrible, you know, because it brings back memories of sinning and, and lusting and, and all this stuff. And, you know. I mean, there's a lot more to this whole music issue, and I know, um, you know, it's been suggested that I redo the devil and music uh, study. I did audio study, but it's it's very difficult to do on YouTube because I get the copyright thing. Um, I mean, I'm well within my rights with, you know, the fair use clause in the U.S. copyright law, section 107, but YouTube doesn't care about that, so I can't really redo that. Um, what about backsliding? It was another question I saw. Um, and 
the, the scriptures there were Hebrews chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, um, which if you look at it, um, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, it says, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, um, seeing they crucify to the, themselves the Son of God afresh and put into an open shame. I think you mixed that up there, who wrote that. It's, um, but, you know, it's it says, um, verse 4, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift or made partakers of the Holy Ghost, you know, if they shall fall away to renew them again under a pence. So, um, Hebrews chapter six is not talking about backsliders. Okay. Um, seeing around. Um, yeah, I'm looking at some of the comments here. Hebrews chapter six is not about backsliders. It's about people who took the mark of the beast in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why it's written to Hebrews. All right. Um, you can backslide as a Christian. You can get messed up. And I, I don't really even like the term backslide because it's not really, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I ever looked, but I don't pretty sure it's not in the Bible. I think there's a the backslider in heart shall be filled with his ways or something like that. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. So backslider is technically in the Bible, uh, certainly. Um, but what happens is you know, um, yeah, backsliding is not in the New Testament. Yeah, you're right, Brother Jeremy. Yeah, um, it it just you can get messed up in things as a Christian and get pretty far away from the Lord, and life can get pretty miserable. Um, so um, Hebrews chapter six is definitely not about backsliding. Um, it's about somebody taking the mark. And uh, they have Second Peter chapter two. I'll go there real quick. Second Peter chapter two. Have my Bible here beside me, but this is a little bit quicker to do. Second Peter chapter two, verses twenty through twenty-two. For after, if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog has turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Um, dogs and sows are not saved people. Sheep are saved people. Okay. And notice there in verse 20, it says, if they have, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 21, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it. Okay. Um, it is all about people having a head knowledge an intellectual understanding of what salvation is. Um, you know, right now, okay, understand something here. In the past, Christianity was very much a, you know, um, they were meeting secretly because they were being persecuted so much. They were not just having open, you know, hey, uh, you know, anybody's welcome. First Baptist Church, come on in, you know, whatever. That that was not there. That was not a New Testament practice. They were meeting in secret, and uh, they were going out and getting people saved and then bringing them into the church, presenting them before the elders of the church and saying, okay, brother so-and-so here just got saved, or sister, whatever, she just got saved, and they would teach them. And the Christians oftentimes would go to their house and actually teach them. Uh, you'll see that, uh, you know, that they were teaching house to house. Um in the book of Acts. So Christians were actually going out and teaching the lost. There was no open, just anybody can come in and whatever, you know, else. And so the problem is now we have, you know, ministries like mine and ministries like others that are, that are preaching the word and it's, and all of what we believe and teach is just out there for the whole world to see. So a lot of people come along and they're seeing it and they're saying, Hey, you know, I can copy that. I can copy Peter Ruckman. I can copy Lester Roloff. I can copy whoever. And you can learn Bible doctrine as a lost person. Um, and you can mimic things. And the only way to really tell these people apart from really truly saved people is uh, the fruit. First of all, there will be some problems there. The, the fruit of the spirit. 
um, and the fellowship of the Spirit. Again, you might you might click on somebody and they're using the King James Bible and you just get a weird feeling, kind of a, I don't know, something just doesn't seem right with this guy. And it's fellowship of the Spirit. Um, so, uh, but, you know, we got to watch out for intellectual belief. Uh, that's definitely a big thing. Um, okay, I want to get to some of the stuff over here. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not really seeing many of the questions because I'm trying to get through these. I can't give real quick, quick real quick answers on a lot of this. Um, Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, time of Jacob's trouble, saints ruling with Christ versus us. Um, I believe that both rule and reign with Jesus Christ. Um, oops, clicked the wrong thing. Revelation chapter 20. Oops, here. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay? So, um, there you have it. Uh, they, these saints in the time of Jacob's trouble that are beheaded, uh, that didn't take the mark, they live, they rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. You say, well, then, you know, we don't get to, right? Uh, well, no, that doesn't work either because you have, um, uh, let me think here. Second Timothy chapter 2, um, verse 11. Actually, I'll start in verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Here we go. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. So you're being denied millennial inheritance, you know, uh, ruling and reigning with Christ. You're not being denied salvation um, if you're not, you know, suffering and things, if, if you deny him in this life, if you're cowardly and whatever else. So, um, I think that brings me up to speed with the other questions there. Um, okay, I'm seeing some questions here. I'll start out with Hockey Joe. If you, if I'm going to start here with Hockey Joe, with the uh, Frankenberry guy there, uh, face. <laughs> um, if your question's up above that, then please retype it. I apologize. I'm just trying to get through these. Why do some people believe that animals go to heaven? Um, because people have a wrong interpretation of what heaven is. They think that heaven is things I like here, but better in heaven. That's not it. Um, I don't believe that the Bible uh, has anything. Uh, the Bible does not teach that animals go to heaven. I mean, how can an animal go to heaven? Do they make an ex uh, a decision to accept Jesus Christ as their savior? No, they don't. Um, it's just people trying to make heaven into their earthly life. It doesn't work. Um, Okay, um, the KJV Bible 1611 says, what is easy believism? Um, it's, it's, it's a term that, that you know, a lot of us have come up with for people that just say that there's, you can have salvation without any kind of repentance, without any kind of um, you know, changing your mind and changing life that comes afterwards. It's just this, you pray the prayer or you just say, I believe I'm in. Um, it's it's it should better be called I guess intellectual believism uh, is how I would answer that I do have a study on it. Um, David Provost question: Please shed some light on James five for a young father that is sick to death. Um, well, James five is is about you know Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble there, but I, I think calling calling for the elders of the church and things. Uh, okay, uh, verse 14, actually verse 13, is any among you afflicted, let him pray, is any merry, let him sing psalms, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let him let them pray over him, anointing with him, him with oil in the name of the Lord. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's perfectly fine, um, you know, to have Christians pray over others and things like that. Elders of the church pray for them. And certainly we do have a lot of prayer requests and please pray my wife is sick or whatever else. That does happen quite a bit. Um, 
but I think that the most important thing right now, or what you need to realize from the book of James is that this is into the time of Jacob's trouble. So a lot of the sign gifts are kind of coming back there. And um, I don't know if there's a, a real true return to total miraculous healing with like the apostolic sign gift thing. But I do think that there's going to be some more spiritual gifts that, that show up again after the body of Christ leaves. Uh, the, the, the thing, the standard there for Christians today is, um, you know, the gifts of healing mentioned in first Corinthians chapter 12. And I think part of that is it's not so much a, that the elders can come and just lay their hands on you and you'll get better. Uh, it's more of a, a thing of, okay. You know, Paul says to, to Timothy, um, you know, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach sake and thy off thine often infirmities. Um, there's more of a healing type of a thing there, uh, be it uh, through nutrition, um, herbal healing, um, you know, prayer, of course, obviously, uh, that's what we need to be doing as Christians now. So, you know, if you're, if you're sick and you know, you're dying as a result of it, uh, you know, I would need to know more details as far as it cancer, is it diabetes, is it whatever. Um, and I would say, look up some things on that natural cures for whatever you have, and you'll find a lot of information. And um, quite frankly, a lot of Christians are very much lacking in understanding how to heal people. And that's a shame. We've just kind of given it over to the medical establishment. And that's really a shame. Um, okay, let's go down through here. Okay. Scott Sharp, question, why do you suppose so many people follow false teachers? Um, because they they want um, they want to follow false teachers. Uh, they they get this scripture here. I don't want to misquote it. That's second Timothy. I have a terrible time with first Timothy and second Timothy. I always get the, the numbers mixed up in my head. Uh, second Timothy chapter four. Verse three, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Um, one of the most incredible things to me was watching Ken, uh, Kenneth Copeland's followers cheer as he do a, do a, he did a, a flyby in a $22 million jet. And, um, and, you know, you think to yourself, these people don't have much money. They can't have much money, but they're they're cheering the guy flying by in this $22 million jet. I mean, so it should raise some questions there. But why would they cheer it? Because, you see, if he can get away with coveting, then I can get away with coveting. He has big debts and big money and everything else, and he's filthy rich. So that means I can make that a goal for my life. That's why they listen to a guy like Kenneth Copeland. Um you know, people will go after false teachings like that for that very reason. So, and it, it goes on and on and on. I mean, you, there's so many other reasons. Uh, good night. I'm way behind <laughs> the questions. These things come up so quick. Um, okay. I'm trying to get back up to where I was here. I have a terrible time with this. Okay, I'm like having to go way down here. <sighs> okay, I see one here. I'm just going to have to go down to the bottom. I'm sorry. Just please retype your questions and write question all in capital letters, please, so it's easier for me to see it. Uh, Mano, Jenna, and Jananian. Brian is going to an apostolic church a sin. Uh, yes, I would not go to an apostolic church. Um, those ones, you know, I mean, you know, understand that the church, the word church in scripture, it means a, a group of Christians, a, it's a congregation, a called out assembly, different ways that you could say it there. Uh, I would, you know, some church that's claiming to be apostolic and whatever else, I mean, just do a simple test. You don't even have to say, you know, well, is this right? Look at their doctrine. Is it according to what's going on in the, in the New Testament? They have a church building. They're doing things that are not in the New Testament. So that's pretty easy to just go, no, sorry. Um, uh, 
okay, Aaron Judge, question. I've been trying to come off the insulin, but whenever I try, I end up messing up uh, my health real bad. Is there a way I can wean off the insulin without going into uh, the diabetic coma? I think is what I eat meat and uh, veg mainly. Um, okay, the the whole thing of um, diabetes and, and whatever else, there's a lot of different ways to fight that thing. Can't go into a whole lot of it. Cinnamon, ground cinnamon is a very good way to, to regulate your blood sugars. Um, oh boy. I, you know, natural health cures. Look up natural health cures for diabetes. Uh, I would definitely do that. Um, it's, you know, there's ways to fight diabetes. Definitely. Um, so just, just look up natural cures for diabetes and you'll find a lot more than I can tell you in this video. Um, Dr. John Bergman, I, I love his stuff. He's a, he's a chiropractic doctor out in California, nutritional therapist as well. Very brilliant man, extremely brilliant man, but he's got a very foul mouth and that's why I don't recommend him much, but he's, he's got some real good stuff. Uh, Eric Berg is also pretty good. Um, and doc, Dr. Mike Vander Sheldon, I like his stuff as well. Uh, okay. Um, oh man. Okay. I'm trying to get down through here looking for, um, Chris Brower question. How can, how can someone be saved? I think is what you're trying to say. Um, well, I have a lot of videos on that and it, you know, salvation is not you, it's God. Okay, just to put it very plainly. And God wants you to be honest, admit that you're a sinner. Okay. Believe the Bible, what the Bible says. These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. If you're basing your salvation on what other Christians are doing, on what church creeds are, or denominations, or whatever else, you're going to fail. Plain and simple. You have to understand the Bible is true. Read the account of how Jesus died, how he was buried, how he rose again. Um, and that is what can pay for your sin. And then you understand, hey, I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm worthy of judgment. Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe what the Bible says about him. And then you come to God as a sinner and you call out to him and say, God, please save me. That is biblical salvation. Um Okay, question. Can you speak on what the everlasting gospel is found in Revelation 14, verse 6? Thank you. The everlasting gospel is actually given right there in the passage. And people get this mixed up. You know, they say, well, everlasting, that means it's always been. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud uh, voice, fear God and give, give glory to him. The hour of his judgment has come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains and waters. So what is the everlasting gospel? Not the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The everlasting gospel is right there. Fear God and give glory to him. All right. In that time period, you're gonna have to fear God. You're not going to fear man. All right. So that's right. There's the everlasting gospel verse seven. But notice the, the angel there says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. But what's already been here? It's already been preached from the beginning of time, right? No, this is a new gospel that he's bringing and he's preaching to these people. So um, that's how I would answer that. Okay. Florida Gospel Tracks. Question, is Gene Kim lost? Some of his stuff is good, but some of his stuff is really wacky. He says that Judas is proof that a Christian can be possessed. <laughs> uh, Gene Kim, my issue with him is, you know, he's, he's you know, I, I think we should start calling him Clickbait Kim. Okay. Um, he does all these clickbait videos. Totally defies what Peter Ruckman said. Uh, Peter Ruckman did a question and answer thing. And he said he teaches his young men, when you go through PBI, Pensacola Bible Institute, you do not major in the weird things, green men from Mars and sea creatures coming up from underneath and where is hell located. And, you know, as far as, 
Is there portals to hell down in the Bermuda Triangle? You don't focus on that stuff. But see, Gene Kim is using that stuff to make money. So I would have some real big questions about him. Um, I'm not going to go after him the way I go after Robert Breaker. Uh, but uh, there are some big issues with Gene Kim, and I don't recommend him at all. Uh, sword user question. The Christian club at my school has only two leaders and I, how should I go about recruiting new leaders? Christian club at my school. Um, I'm assuming you mean high school, I think. Um, how should I go about recruiting new leaders? Well, uh, I don't, I really don't know a lot of details about it, to be honest with you. So I can't really give much of a really good que uh, answer to that question. Um, Ahab, question, how can you tell the difference between a false convert and a carnal Christian? I don't feel saved, even though I called upon the name of the Lord a year ago and believe the King James Bible. A carnal Christian is, is one uh, that will understand the doctrines of the Bible, but is messing around with the flesh. Obviously. Um, you know, I'm not going to judge a Christian that says, well, I'm, I'm struggling with uh, looking at pornography occasionally and, and you know, and uh, I got drunk the other night and, and whatever else. I'm not going to be real rough on somebody, somebody that smokes cigarettes. I, I get that a lot, you know, um, from Christians. Those are things that you're doing to please the flesh. It's carnal. Uh, where I start to judge is when they start to get really, really mixed up doctrinally and they start coming out and radically defending the Trinity. Um, saying you can lose your salvation, you have to work, you know, hard to stay saved and keep your salvation and things like that. Then I start judging them. Um, you know, that's a false convert. They're messed up doctrinally. Um, John chapter, maybe it's a scripture on that real quick. It's going to be better to use my Bible because I have it marked in my Bible. Um, the standard that the Lord Jesus Christ set down for his saints um, John chapter 14 I was thinking chapter 16 John chapter 14 verse 22 Judas saith unto him not Iscariot Lord how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Um, that's a good one right there. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 13. Another one I was thinking about is, Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Um, watch out for people that put an overemphasis on the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit in a Christian will testify of Jesus Christ. He will magnify Jesus Christ. So you get these people that are all concerned about the Holy Spirit, like the charismatics. It's kind of a problem. Um, but truth is what separates us. When you talk to a real Christian, a real Bible believer, and you just get so excited about the truth and the oh, Lord showed me this. Did you ever see that? Oh, yeah. You know, and there's agreement there. Again, there's not really any scripture saying that we can agree to disagree on major doctrines. And yet you have many professing Christians do that today, but Christians will be, get very excited about truth. So, all right. Um, it's kind of going down through here again. Oh, Robbie, a question. Is it normal if a saved Christian suffers continually from what the world calls depression and can't wait to die how do you reconcile that with the fruit of the spirit that should be joy thanks um okay important question um i i've gotten this thing a couple times and i'm going to tell you how the, the system works here okay one of the early stages of of when you first get saved you will go through a really hard time okay i've seen this thing for many 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 years counseling a lot of different christians it's kind of the basic training. It's the testing and proving time, so to speak, as a, as a new Christian. And you'll go through some really, really down times. You'll be getting family turning against you that you never thought would. You'll have friends and, and co-workers and whatever else, and they really will persecute you. And you'll go through that initial time there. That's when a lot of the depression will happen. Once you get through that time and you kind of 
you know, are proved on the battlefield, so to speak. You kind of get used to it after a while. And a lot of that depression will kind of leave, right? You'll still have those times where you'll get down, but a lot of it's going to, it'll get better with time because you just get used to it, you know, is the best way I can say that. Um, but, you know, uh, Paul, even as a senior Christian, he's still saying for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And that is there. That is definitely there. But, you know, he's also saying, nevertheless, it's more needful that I abide with you. He's saying, you know, I know that you people need me. I know that I know that I have a purpose. I know what God's will is for me. Again, when the, when you're just newly saved, the Lord's teaching you a lot of doctrine. The Lord's teaching you how to take persecution as a Christian. God can't use you on a really, really high level. OK, uh, right away. He will use you for some things and, and here and there to witness to people and whatever else. But you need to go through some things. You need to be established in the word and doctrine. All right. That's very important. So a lot of your depression is going to come early on as a Christian. And it's always going to be there in a sense, but not like it when you first get saved, if I can say it that way. Um, I love Jesus. Thank you, God. Says, question, Jesus talks a lot about casting out demons. If I fast and pray for as long as I can to cast out a demon out of someone, will it happen? I am new to the faith in a woman. Um, the thing of casting out devils is actually given as a sign um, in the book of Mark. I'm going right past it here. Mark chapter. Yeah, it's, it's quicker for me to do the sword searcher thing, I think, in some ways. I'm a big advocate of, of just using your print King James Bible, but um, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And it goes on. So casting out devils is more of a sign gift for the Jews um, to convince the Jews that there's something here that is not just being faked. Um, casting out devils today, uh, I would say you just get somebody saved and, um, when somebody gets saved, the devils are going to leave. I do not believe that a Christian can be possessed with devils. Um, that's how I'd answer that. This, this deliverance ministry stuff, exorcism especially is real bad. I think it's actually, a lot of times it's not actually that they're casting out devils. They're actually imparting devils into the person. Um, what's the guy's name? Not Bob Ross. Uh, I cannot think of his name right now. Um, I did a whole video series of videos on the guy. I know the name and I cannot think of it. <laughs> um, Okay, um, busy. A question: Why are you breaking down the school bus bride? Okay, I figured this was going to come up. I knew somebody, yeah, because I saw a comment. People are saying, "What's the deal with the school bus thing?" Okay, um, because we're going to have a whole fleet of school buses with people living in them. That's going to be our religious commune. We're taking people to school. No, I'm just kidding about that. Kind of uh, school buses. Um, you can find them used for very, very cheap, and they make really good storage. Um, and uh, you can, I mean, you can you can pick them up for just a, a couple thousand dollars. They're cheaper than building a regular shed or whatever else. You take the, the bus seat, seats out of them, and, uh, you know, if you have a property, it's kind of an off-grid property or whatever else. It's not technically a structure. It's a, it's a vehicle, and so if it's parked there, you're not going to, they can't really say, uh, you know, they can't really say a whole lot because it's, it's actually a vehicle. It's movable. So with zoning and things, Maine's actually a pretty neat state because we actually have legislation here where you can build a tiny house. If anybody's ever heard of the tiny house movement, they actually have that you can build, um, you know, tiny houses and things like that. So um, it just, it's financially, it makes much more sense. Um, so. I'm not sure what we'll be saying in the future about the school bus projects, but, you know, 
Um, okay, um, let me see here. Oh, yeah, Bob Larson, Infinite Architect. Thank you, Bob Larson. That's correct. Um, I see here, Pete, Brittany, Newfield. I'm with child. We are all alone, um, and my husband holds it against me that we are so isolated. My health is in major trouble from stress. Please help. Uh, my best advice there is, you know, the, the thing of just being in good nutrition when you're with child. Um, I don't know your situation. I, I There's not a whole lot I can comment on. You know, I don't know where you're at. I don't know your situation. Um, but stress is really, really bad for, you know, when you're with child, you're really, you know, uh, you know, is your husband saved or is he lost? I mean, I can't really say a lot about that. Um, if your husband's lost, well, yeah, that's kind of an issue. Um, if he's saved, well, then he needs to, you know, be a better husband and, and, uh, you know, take care of you more and, and, and not get you stressed out. That's, that's a bad idea. Um, I'll say a few things here real quickly as far as uh, you, you can watch our free birthing video. I give a lot more information there on the thing of having a healthy child. Um, but uh, nutrition, very important. The father should be praying over the baby every day. Um, talk to the baby down at the bottom of the belly area, you know, so the baby gets used to putting their head down, facing downward. Uh, that way they come out better. Um, you don't really want them coming out feet first. That's called a breech birth. Uh, so a lot of different things I could say about that, but like, like I said, I don't really know the whole situation there, so I can't, uh, say a whole lot on that. I'm sorry. Um, Dan X question. Why does Acts 22 verse nine say that men with Paul say that the men with Paul did not hear Jesus's voice in Acts nine, seven says they heard a voice and saw no man. I've been wondering about this one for a while. If you can help. Thanks. Um, I did answer this in one of my videos. I, I do remember answering that. I, I, I've done so many videos. My word. I've actually had a couple times now where I think, hey, that'd be a good idea for a sermon. You know, I kind of get this idea and I and I start writing the sermon notes and everything else. And, and I think, wait a second, this seems kind of familiar. And I'll go and I'll check the history of preaching. And I, oh, yeah, I did do a sermon on that already. So, um, Acts chapter 22, verse 9, And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And then uh, Acts 9, 7 says, And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. Um, I cannot think of what the, the thing was I, on how I answered that. This, I mean, this, these are some of the things that atheists will bring up. They'll bring this stuff up and say, well, see, it's a contradiction and, you know, whatever else. Um, boy, I cannot think of the video where I would have answered that. Man, these questions are coming up so quick. My word. Okay, I'm kind of back up to where I was there. Jonathan Bowler, I'll answer your question. I came across some Bible believers that believe that the body of Christ and the bride of Christ are separate. And in fact, Israel is the bride and we are the body of Christ. Thoughts. It's hyper dispensationalism is what that is. Um, Peter and James and John spoke to the, you know, Israel and Paul spoke to, you know, the, the church of the one body, I think they'll call it and things. Um, Baptist briders, you know, that, that there's a lot of these different weird heretical sects. Um, and the, the easiest way to answer that is uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 7. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles. 
who also were in Christ before me. Um, so the early believers there, including Peter and James and John and things, um, they were in Christ before Paul was even saved. So what they'll try to say is that the the bride, the uh, how is it, the body of Christ, um, you know, is Paul to the rapture and the bride is, you know, kind of Acts chapter two up until Paul or something. And then Peter and James and John, they kind of went on and they kept on, you know, making the bride of Christ and then the, the body of Christ is separate. And then, you know, no, it's, it's nonsense. I, you know, flee from that one. <laughs> uh, Michael M. Question. Local church Bible publishers was blocked in Germany. Where can I buy a King James Version? Um, church Bible publishers, you might want to check with them. Um, I would check with them. Uh, I did have a thing. One of them contacted me and said that, that there's a way that you can write something to them and whatever else. I, I just I would email them and ask them if they can do something. Eventually, when we get things restructured, I would, I'd actually like to sell King James Bibles. From our uh, web store is what I'm planning on, and um, and I'm going to be shipping them out to anybody in any country. We'll work out the uh, shipping details and whatever else. I had sent a, sent a King James Bible to a pastor in Russia the one time. So, um, Bay Livin, question: Do you have any commentaries you would recommend? Um, no, I don't. Uh, you know, Ruckman's commentaries, Dr. Peter S. S. Ruckman, his commentaries are pretty good, but it, it just stick with the Bible, my opinion. Um, uh, Locelli G2006 question. Do you believe that God can talk with us when we open the Bible you know, randomly? Um, I think it's dangerous to do. I think it's a form of witchcraft, to be very honest. Um, uh, what was his name? Um, John Wesley, founder of the Methodist Church, was known to do that. You just kind of take your Bible like this. You say, I'm in this, this situation right now, so I'll just kind of go like that and point to a verse and say, In the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired, namely by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beard. Oh no, it must be the Lord telling me I need to shave my beard. Uh, no, or it could be just open the thing up and point it to a verse. You know, it doesn't mean anything. You don't go by a scripture like that. You, you actually look and say, okay, uh, you, you know, you got to read the Bible. Don't be lazy as a Christian and say, you know, I got to find magical verses by just randomly pointing. A bad idea. Uh, study the scriptures and you'll find the answers to your questions. King James Bible Believer, question, what do you think, Brian, about the one book rightly divided by Doug, or by Stauffer slash Roy? Uh, he came out recently and said that salvation is not by faith and works in the Old Testament. So I don't recommend Doug Stauffer. And I had the email. I was on his email list. He actually contacted me at one point in time, wanted me to sell his books on my website. And I just simply said, no, we're kind of restructuring things, whatever. Um, I don't recommend his books. Okay, go down through here. Bula, 1988, greetings. How do you feel about the scandal in the Catholic Church? Which one? <laughs> yeah, that's all I say. Which one? There's plenty of scandals in the Catholic Church. It just proves that they're false. Um, I wish that there was a way I could just have, you know, comments or something that, because a lot of you are going back and forth, and then it jumbles up the, the questions and things. I love to see the fellowship over there, but, you know, man. Uh, uh, Carl Cockwell, question, please, do you trust the Dead Sea Scrolls? No. And authenticity of it? Um, no, I don't. And it, and you trust the books, Thomas and Enoch. No, I don't. I don't trust any of that stuff. Um, God promised to preserve his word. And I believe that that promise carries into the King James Bible. And so 
I have the King James Bible. I don't need the other stuff. Is the way, way I would answer that. Um, Nudie Khan, do you have an email? Yes, I do. I would love to talk with you. Yeah, you know, I appreciate that. I really do. But there's just so many people that email and things. And I, I had to unfortunately come out years ago and say I can't take emails anymore because it was literally just full time job doing answering emails. And um, I just can't go back to that. Uh, you know, our fellowship is going to be in heaven. I mean, you, you meet me out on the street, which I realize most people can't because we're way in the middle of nowhere, you know, up in northern Maine. We live in a town. We don't live, you know, off grid yet or anything, but um, we're kind of not exactly, you know, driving real short driving distance for most people. But I love to talk to people. I love fellowshipping with the brethren, but it's the ministry I do is answering people through video is what I try to do. Um, Demarius. Okay. I'll go up to iron 95. Now come back to Demarius Haynes there. Iron 95 question was Abraham Lincoln saved. Well, um, Charles Janikwi, the Catholic priest that spoke with him said he was, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe his wife was, I think she was into necromancy. Um, but Abraham Lincoln, there's a possibility that he was, I'll say that. Um, Demarius Haynes, brother, can you do a video on how a parent should deal with a child that has become transgender or gay, and whether or not they should disown them for their lifestyle? Well, I would say what level? Okay, um, there's people, there's young people that will go off to college and get their head warped by some devil-possessed professor there, and, and um, you can talk to them and whatever else. But if they're very prideful in their sin, I would simply say, yeah, don't, don't come around here anymore. Uh, I'm sorry, but you're not welcome in this heaven. Um, because is uh, sodomy and transgenderism is self-destruction. It's, it's suicide, essentially what you're doing. You're sterilizing yourself and opening yourself up to all kinds of pain and suffering and whatever else. And I've talked to a lot of former sodomites, people that were in it, and it, it is a terrible, terrible lifestyle. Um, you get into some of the sadomasochism and things. It's a very, very dark world. It's a very sad world. Very, very, very sad. And if you if you're into that stuff, you need to come out of it. Uh, I don't hate you if you're into those things, um, but man, it's a dark world to get into. And I mean, you'll never know the love of, that's there that God intended, that God designed between a man and a woman, and that they in their love they produce a child. And you see the child, and you and you see your child grow. And and oh, it's just, I'm so thankful. The Lord brought me my wife and gave us a son. It's it's taken me through some very, very dark times. And you will never have that if you're into sodomy or transgenderism. Um, Michael Young. Hi, I'm, I'm a new born again Christian. And I read through the Bible once, read through the Bible once, and I'm on the second time around, but studying it this time too. Found something great in Colossians 3.11. Praise is all and in all. Uh, wow. Um Well, that's talking about saved people first and foremost. Uh, Three eleven. Uh, Colossians chapter three verse ten, and that have put on and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, uh, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Talking about saved people, we are all members of the body of Christ. No distinction, no preference, because you're of a certain race or, you know, whatever else. Yeah. Is anything. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, Alan Remy, did you learn about the secret societies of Satan through the Bible or vice versa? Do you think they are going to do something big soon? Can you touch on this a bit? Um, secret societies, uh, yeah, there's there's different things in scripture that talks about these people doing things in secret and have swearing of oaths and things like that. So it is definitely in scripture that you can see the foundation for these people. Um, uh, is, a lot of my knowledge comes from outside of the scriptures on the actual details of the Jesuits, the Freemasons, the Council on Foreign Relations, on and on and on. 
Um, I have studied different secular sources and things on that. Uh, do I believe that they're going to be doing something big soon? Um, well, there's a lot of different cards that can be played <laughs> here um, with economic collapse, uh, EMP attack, uh, grid down situation, um, terrorism type of stuff. Uh, you know, an all out war against Islam would be another big one. They could blow up Mecca and Medina. It's called the Winslow plan. You can look that up um, and it would lead to Muslims going just insane. And that could usher in the Antichrist system of going out. He goes forth conquering and to conquer. So, uh, but you know, the whole thing is there's no secret society out there that can act apart from God giving them permission. You see that in the book of Job, chapter one, Satan has to come and present himself before the Lord, and the Lord has to give him permission to attack Job. Um, so secret societies, yeah, they're dangerous, yeah, they're bad, but they're still under God's authority in terms of they can't do anything without him giving them the green light. Uh, Omar Gonzalez, I believe Lincoln was the first president to do martial law. Yeah, he was. There's a whole lot more you could say about him. Um, just as soon as I start looking at a question, it goes up, 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 like up like that. Uh, where was that one question at? Frederick Anderson, question, what are your, what's your thoughts on David Wilkerson and Paul Washer? Not really familiar too much with, with Wilkerson. Paul Washer is, I think he, he, he cries a bit much. I get wary, you know, of, of a man that, that cries for effect. Um, and he's a Calvinist, so, the, you know, kind of a problem. Um, KGV Bible 1611, Brandon, have you heard of Sin City Preacher? I've heard the name, but I don't, I can't off the top of my head say much about that. Um, T. Sap, do you know anything about the black Hebrew Israelites? Yeah, they're satanic. Uh, just as simple as that. The racist Satanists is what they are. Um, do Oh, man. Uh, question. Christian 9419. Could you guys give any advice on working with lost co-workers? I work at an auto parts store and I'm greatly vexed, but I have to have an income. Yeah. Um, I remember working... You know, even as a lost man, I was vexed by some of the filthy things that I would hear, you know, factory where I used to work. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of them things that, that uh, you know, you just try to to live as a Christian around them and, and, you know, read your Bible. You know, that's 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 a fun thing to do. You know, just bring your Bible with you, you know, break time, just sit there and read the Bible or whatever. Or, uh, you know, if, if things aren't real busy and and people are just kind of standing around, just have a little pocket Bible that you can pull out, just open it up and start reading it right there, or, you know, whatever else, or, you know, um, cause I know how men are, and you know, the workforce and the, and you know, uh, you know, you, cause you, if you just come out right out and say, I don't appreciate the profanity, then they'll kind of start doing it more just to irritate you and whatever else. But, uh, yeah. All right. West plus one. There's a guy on YouTube. Thinks I think his name is Stephen Anderson. And he seems to be quite angry at times. Anyone been to his sermons? Once or twice. Yeah, we've been uh, exposing him for a long time. He works with uh, worked with a Roman Catholic church, uh, the Universal One Church in South Africa. Um, he's a total fraud. As a Hollywood uh, movie guy, Paul Wittenberger making his films for him. Um, you know, lots of money coming in. He can just fly all over the place. You know, I think he's connected to the military right now, to be honest. So more stuff coming out on that, too, in the future. We're, we're looking into some things. I, I do believe, just to kind of let the cat out of the bag here a little bit, I do believe that a lot of the Baptists 
independent fundamental Baptists are connected to the military, um, including Peter Ruckman, unfortunately. Um, I, you know, a lot of people uh, think that I'm just a, a worshiper of Peter Ruckman, and I'm not. I recommend Ruckman. I've, I've been greatly blessed by the man. I love him in the Lord, but there are some major problems there. And not, not enough to make me feel like I need to come out and expose the guy and totally call him a heretic and whatever else. But there was definitely some connections to the military and the military has got some really bad stuff that they do and they stand for and whatever. Um, Uh, <laughs> Samuel Foley, why does turmeric always stain food super yellow? Just the nature of turmeric. Okay, it's it's just it's how God made it. It's a wonderful, um, you know, superfood. Very highly recommended. I, I'm, I'm I'm so sorry to, to you out there if I've missed your questions. I, I it's just oh boy. Question, Alan Haremi, uh, do you believe the rapture will be an event in the blink of an eye, or God handing us over to the evil forces of the world to be persecuted, as this found in the Bible? Um, I have a lot of studies on the of the thing of uh, uh, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. The best scripture that tells you how it's going to happen uh, when Paul talks about the mystery that's revealed to him is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. Um, Behold, I show you a mystery. This is something that has not previously been revealed. Um, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Right there. You know that it's not a reference to anything in the gospel accounts in terms of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. It is mentioned in John by Jesus. You know, I am the resurrection and the life. You know, talking about after they're, you know, there when he's with Lazarus, you know, and, well, Mary and Martha, and he's talking about Lazarus being dead and whatever else. And she says, I know my brother shall rise again, you know. Um, so uh, it is mentioned in the book of John. But Paul is saying, this is a mystery that I'm revealing here. And he says, uh, the, dead in, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Okay, there is no resurrection of the dead, saints, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, or Luke 17, or 21. None. So second coming passages, there's nothing at all about resurrection of dead saints. So hi, everybody out there. I'm just seeing some of this stuff. Um, okay, busy. Um, can you explain the spiritual baptism and what the water is? Many have asked about that and baptismal doctrine in general. There's a lot of different baptisms in the New Testament. Um, the the thing of when the Holy when you're when you're baptized by the Holy Spirit, um, this you know th this is not something I can just answer very quickly. It, it's basically when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you start to understand truth and you start to have that you know He will guide you into all truth. Um, it's, it sets you apart from the world, the lost world, because the lost world doesn't want truth. You know, they want to pick and choose what they want out of truth. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon a Christian, when you get saved, you'll have a love for truth and a desire for truth. And then the Lord, as a gentle, loving father, will will gently start to lead you along and say, um, son, daughter, uh, this thing here needs to go. See, it says right here in the Bible don't do this, okay? Um, and and so it'll start to convict you of sin in your life. And it still happens today to me. I've been saved a long time. And, um, you know, going on 20 years now, I've been saved. And uh, so um, the Lord will still show you things throughout your life. Sanctification is what that's called, the process of sanctification. So that goes back to the thing of being baptized by the Spirit. Um, uh, black 
Blake Rain 454 question how do, how to know the difference in weight and no answers to prayer um, I, I believe that that uh, when you have a definite no uh, answer to a prayer the Lord will show you why okay he will make it very very plain and um, it'll be just absolutely not no and you'll lose your desire for that specific prayer to be answered um, we were praying for a while about the possibility of getting into a mortgaged house situation because it'd be a lot easier for us than just you know buying bare land like we've done and building on that land it's a lot of uh, work on me and whatever else but um, and so we we prayed about it we were trying we went to actually looked at a couple places put an offer on a place or two I mean it just and it was just finally boom no not gonna happen and the desire for a mortgaged house that's already built and everything else and we have a monthly payment that desire is gone in me so that's a no okay um there's other things that we've been praying about and there's not a no there there's not a change direction it's more of a just hold on time's not yet um the lord has things all worked out in his timing he's up in heaven he can see out into the future he directs things we are down here we see through a glass darkly okay the bible is kind of the glass that, that we look into and filter things through that and so there's some things that you just you can't see out ahead and god can and you'll see that where you just think you have to have this answer to prayer and the answer is just wait and you go a little bit longer and all of a sudden oh that's why he didn't let me have that happen but it's Another answer to that same kind of prayer, but it's different than what I was originally thinking. That's how I'd answer that. Uh, amazing. What do you think about the Truth Shall Make You Free YouTube channel? Um, I've, I've appreciated some of the videos. I'm not really sure if it's a, I, I guess it's a woman. It's a, it's a computer voice. I'm, I'm not really into the computer voice thing. I understand if, I think they're from France, I think. Um, I think if I remember correctly. But, uh, you know, I've appreciated some of the stuff. I, I know that they have a thing with speaking in tongues or whatever else. And, um, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, you know, a lot of people, I, I mean, I'm thankful that people want to really get into thorough discussions with me. But in terms of me being able to sit down and watch a lot of videos, it just, it can't happen. I actually had some, uh, uh, somebody send me these two videos a guy uh, i can't say brother or not because I don't, I don't know i don't know him but uh it's called uh zeitgeist destroyed and the ipad goat thing mystery solved type of deal here um they sent me these two dvds you know whoops i got that upside down i think like that and uh i think i had both of them upside down yeah something but you know I, I want to get around to watching these videos and do a little review of them, but very, very, very busy. Um, Bible fandom, a question. What are your thoughts on Charles Finney? I know Calvinists hate him, but don't hear Bible leaders say much about him. Um, I know Brother Jeremy and, and I have talked about that. I don't really know a whole lot about Charles Finney, but uh, he came up with some pretty heretical stuff. So I can't really comment a whole lot just because I haven't done much research into him, very honestly. Um, okay, I, I see the thing. Why have you blocked? Why you have blocked him? Uh, the truth shall make you free. I didn't block. The truth shall make you free. I don't. I don't think I did. Anyways, I'd have to check on that. I'd. I do block, you know, a fair amount of people, but it's only for profanity or if you're posting heretical stuff or whatever else, comments and things. Uh, my brother Jacob, how you doing? Bobby A, question. Is it biblical to keep praying for a person who heard the gospel several times and keeps rejecting it? What does it mean to turn someone unto Satan? Thank you, brother. Um, when the thing of uh, whom I have delivered unto Satan for the destruction of, of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That's First Corinthians chapter 5. Um, what's going on there is it's he's a saved man 
but he's basically fornicating with his father's wife. Now, as I've said, it could be a stepmother. I don't know if it was his actual birth mother, but if it was, that's really bad. Um, but Paul's talking about a saved man doing this stuff, and so he's delivered him unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Uh, doing that to a lost person that Satan already has them. Um, so it's biblical to keep praying for a person who heard the gospel several times and keeps rejecting it. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, just you might have to get to a po point in time where you say, you know what, I just, you know, I'm just going to have to pray for you, I, but I can't talk to you or whatever else. And uh, let the Lord work on it. It can take years sometimes for somebody to come to the end of themselves and, and find you know, that time when they need to be saved. Um, Christian 9419 question. Does anyone have thoughts on J. Vernon McGee? Uh, not really. I don't have a whole lot of thoughts on, on his stuff. I know he wrote a bunch of different questions and things. Um, uh, question. What does it mean that Jesus came by water and blood? Um, I, I saw that too. I, you know, try to get to that thing. Oh boy, that's a that's a deep thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I I I'd have to. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll write that down. Um, you know, a lot of these questions, a lot of these questions are not just quick things that I can answer. I, you know, I have to do the study and and. You know, I can do, yeah, let me write it down. I mean, there's, there's different ways to look at that thing. Um, I apologize. That's not, that's not something I can really answer very quickly. Um, Okay, stop the queers. Question, have you seen Craig in production and film works? He has made lots of stuff against you. <laughs> yeah, we did a thing on live stream one time, that kid, you know, coming out with a bunch of stuff. And, it, and right at the end, he attacks the Jews. And you kind of go, yeah, it's about, you know, not real surprising. Um, JD, heard a preterist attacking the rapture. Will they be removed pre time of Jacob's trouble? Probably not. Uh, most preterists, um, you know, that I've ever met, uh, they believe all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, that all the events of Revelation happened in the first century and all this other stuff. There is no thousand year reign of Christ and whatever. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the, Chris Young there, yeah, I, I saw your question. Uh, the thing about the by coming by water and blood, yeah, that's that's uh, um, that's one I haven't done a whole lot of study on. To be very frank with you, I cannot answer that question just off the top of my head. So I'll have to look into it, and I'll see if I can bring that out. I have it written down. So. Uh, Aiden Salinas, um, can you make a study debunking aliens because many Christians believe in them? Um, well, uh, I don't know on that one. There's different theories that, that you can come up with on the thing of aliens. What are aliens? Do people actually see them? Is it some kind of drug thing? Is it some kind of a government project or whatever else? Uh, I've, I've looked into some of that stuff, but you know, some of the conspiracy things I've gotten into, there's kind of a level where you get to and you say, okay, I think that's about as far as I want to go. I bought a DVD years ago about this guy that worked in underground bases, deep underground military bases, dumbs, you know, and uh, he was talking about having contact with gray aliens and this and that. And he had this big scar on his chest and he was saying that, you know, he got in a fight and he got shot or whatever else and stuff with a laser rifle or something. And, and uh, right in the middle of things, some guy said about, you know, what's your belief in God and, and you know, whatever else. And the, and the guy got all mad and everything. And total God-hating atheist. So, yeah, I'd be careful about some of that alien stuff. Yeah, I agree. You know, aliens are devils.
I think so. Um, <laughs> question Craig in productions claims that you are a Jesuit Zionist agent. What is your response? <laughs> no, I'm not. Sorry. I know it's it's glamorous to come up with all these theories that, you know, I'm I remember one my, my one of my favorite, we still joke about it, is that uh, my wife, since she's former military intelligence, she's actually I'm a mind controlled uh whatever, and she's my handler. I like that one. Um, I don't think anybody's ever tried to say that I'm actually like a woman or something, like I'm transgendered or something like that. <laughs> it's gonna pretty hard case to to make me into a woman, you know. Uh, yeah, that's that'd be a bad one. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a Jesuit Zionist agent. Okay, I'm a country hillbilly preacher. Um, I worked in logging, and Lord. I've been a wood turning artist. You know, I, I sold in art galleries. I, my testimony is online. You can see it. Um, I'm just a simple man. Okay. I am not linked up to any organizations. I live in a cruddy old house in Northern Maine. I make videos. I love the Lord Jesus Christ and I love the King James Bible. And that's what I do. I'm not an agent of anything. All right. And I realize that they don't believe me even if I say that. So whatever. Uh, Kokoi 1183, what can you say about a theophany? Oh, uh, well, I think the, uh, yeah, Oliver is the handler. There you go. <laughs> uh, I think theophany is what? Uh, appearance of, of the Lord in the Old Testament or something like that, I think. Uh, again, different things there, yeah. Um, KGB Bible 1611. Um, well, Megram there. Brian, have you had an encounter with the devil? Yes, I did on two different occasions. Um, uh, spiritual encounters with the, with uh, physical encounters with the spiritual realm, I think is what the video is called. I talk about it. Um, KGB Bible 1611. Brian, I think I believe that when the catching up of the church happens, the Antichrist will deceive people saying it was aliens. There's a lot of different things that it could be. They could come out with that is a possibility. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, there's a bunch. Man, it just. Okay, I'll go down to I'm trying to get to people that I haven't gotten to. Um, Tony asked, do you have a farm? I always wanted one. No, we don't. We have, we, our land was a farm. Um, back in the 1960s and since then the i actually met an older man that was raised on the property and he was telling me that they had a farm they grew potatoes northern maine's famous for potato growing and their house their family house burned to the ground and so they moved somewhere else and sold the property and it just basically exchanged hands our property was originally uh, the original deed was titled in uh or written out in 1832 so our People have been living on our, our property for almost 200 years. And uh, there's old rock walls and things. It's really kind of fascinating. And um, But they moved away. And um, so it hasn't been farmed in many, many years, which I'm thankful for because then there's no GMO crop stuff on the property. Just to answer your question. Billy Waters, question. Brother, Brother Brian, can talk about the Jesus painting by Achaean Krameric and using it as it's really Jesus our Lord as a contradiction scripture. No idea. I have no idea about that. Sorry. Um, Dustin Hewitt, are you against all IFB pastors churches? Uh, well, I, I can't really answer that because there are some situations. I know Baptist pastors, IFB pastors that I would consider friends. 
that I would consider to be saved brethren. But my question is, why are you doing things that are against the scriptures? Um, Uh, Robbie A question do you think that the Antichrist will be a Pope and a Jew at the same time how is it possible no I don't think he's going to be Jewish um, I, I really don't I think he'll be a the I think when he comes he's going to actually be not really a, a Pope in the sense of what we know as a Pope it's going to be more of a Christ has returned now we'll give the crown to him, you know, and the, the Pope will kind of bow to him. He'll be kind of a a different level Pope uh, as, you know, he sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Now the Pope will take that title, but he doesn't actually have that ability there as far as, you know, a lot of people wouldn't consider him to be God. But I think that the, the difference is going to be the Antichrist is going to show up and he's going to be the beast, the false prophet. And the dragon it's literally going to be a trinity sitting there and uh probably showing themselves to be the trinity at some point in time that's when i believe he he sits in the temple showing himself to be god um so it's going to be a little bit different than that uh, whether he's jewish or not eh, i don't know i'm not sure about that one you know there's a lot of stuff in the in the book of revelation that we aren't going to get today um Okay. All right, I'm down at the bottom. Again, if you haven't had your, your question answered, I apologize. Just kind of retype it in. I'll try to get to it. Um, I think maybe what we could do in the future, uh, uh, just Lord kind of gave me this idea here, just kind of put this in my mind. I think what I'll do in the future, if I want to do one of these question and answer things, I'm actually going to make a video just saying, put your question in the comment section down below, and then I'll try to get to it in a live stream. Um, and I'll announce when the live stream is going to be. I'm not going to do a little thing, you know, because it always gets mixed up then. So, you know, the little, you set the timer when it goes live or whatever else. Yeah. Um, Jehovah is a biblical name of God. Yeah, I know that. Jehovah is, but this Yahweh stuff. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with that. Uh, I know Peter Ruckman wrote a book years ago called The You Who Yahweh Scam, and it's, and it's um, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff on that. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of issues in Christianity that you can study, and it just does not, it does not, uh, you know, um, you know, YHWH, by the way, there, I'm seeing DDF, you wrote that, YHWH. There is, that is kind of a Hebrew thing, but then people take it and say Yahweh, and there's there's Hebrew stuff there that I don't quite get, you know, to be very honest with you. And I think the proper way of actually writing YHWH is Jehovah, um, I think is the, the proper way to write that out. I mean, um, you know, so. You know, I would stick with what the King James Bible says on that. You know, and again, you you got to understand these these the men that translated the King James Bible they weren't just um, regular guys or whatever. These guys were incredible, incredibly uh, intelligent men, writing dictionaries and things. You know, on different foreign languages, they were very very smart. Okay. Um, Where are we at here? Uh, Jonathan Bowler, question, what is your opinion on Chris Pinto, Christian Pinto and an Agilum Films? I actually had a little correspondence back and forth with the guy that worked for Chris. And, uh, yeah, he puts out some decent stuff. But, again, I can't really say a whole lot about that. I, I, I forget what it was. Chris Pinto came out and said something not long ago, a year or two ago, and it was kind of, a, you know, so.
Um, Megram, I heard that we can't use the book of Daniel for the time of Jacob's trouble, 70th week, because it hasn't been opened yet. Thoughts? Um, nah, I wouldn't agree with that. I think it's, it's you know, the time of the end is now. Um, the, the sealing up of the time of the end. I mean, you could say that same thing in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation hasn't been unsealed yet. Um, Jesus does that in heaven. Uh, so. Uh, Ruslan Vorobyev, Brother Brian, let's talk about Jesus at the right hand of God. Most people don't believe that God has a son by whom and through whom the Father operates. Um, they're one and the same being, but they can separate as body and soul can separate. Okay, the Bible says right now we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our soul is up there, but our body is down here, and yet our soul is also in. So there's a lot of things in the spiritual realm there that we don't understand, that we can't understand. And when you look in the book of Hebrews, it talks about he's seated on you know, at the right hand of the Father until, until is the key word there. There's prophecies that have to be fulfilled that require the separation of father and son. But those prophecies, when they're fulfilled, they become one being again. OK, just right now, um, I have a place in eternity, but I'm not there physically. You say, well, then, you'll, then you're separate from your soul in the sense of soul in heaven, body, you know, on earth. Yeah, I am. You say, well, then you'll be that way forever. You're two different persons. No, we're one person. But that time will come when the the rapture, the resurrection of of uh, dead and living saints. If I die before then, you know, then we'll get reunited. But if I'm living, we'll get reunited. Okay. So I did a whole study on that thing. Why is Jesus seated at the right hand of God? You know, the Father. Um, Uh, okay, I think most of you you're answering that stuff. Alan Haremi, do you believe the Antichrist will be a communist worldwide system that targets us Bible believers? Absolutely not. No. Uh, right wing fascism. Pre Vatican II right wing fascism. Uh, if you watch my video on the uh, Antichrist propaganda thing or something, I forget what I called it. Um, HBO came out with this thing called the Young Pope. And they're basically showing what the Antichrist is going to be doing. Uh, the whole world is not going to worship uh, one man in a communist system. Okay, communism is atheism. Uh, atheism is a joke. Okay, you know, just say this about atheism. Because tomorrow is Atheist Day, April first. Don't forget it, April Fool's Day. <laughs> um, atheism is is a what they're doing is they're radicalizing these atheistic people. They are some of the most religious fanatics you'll ever meet. And uh, what are the, what's the thing that the atheist will say? If you could just prove to me God exists. Well, guess what? When this man shows up on the earth and he can do supernatural things, all the atheists are going to conform to Roman Catholicism. And then there'll be one unit. Because you have radical pre-Vatican II Catholics are religious fanatics. Russian, or you know, uh, atheists, <laughs> excuse me, I saw it down there, Russell. Uh, uh, atheists are radical um, uh, religious fanatics. Okay, um, what's going to merge the two halves is when a man shows up to rule both. Um, you know, both of them, you know, believe in in persecuting, you know, religious fanatics like me. So, but you got to bring them together with something and somebody, and that's the Antichrist. Yep. So communism has no part in the future. In other words, it's not going to be a communal thing in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Oh, man.
Uh, okay, what Lily Waters? What's what's the exact name? Could you put the exact name of the painting there? I'll try to to look it up real quick. Um, Christian ninety four nineteen. Do you believe the chemtrails will soon cause a soon famine in the United States and across the world, along with the destruction of farmland and controlled weather? Well, I think the Midwest thing it's happening right now. All the flooding in Nebraska and Iowa and surrounding states. Um, I think it's going to, you know, definitely be leading to some famine type of stuff. I mean, it's it's there's some rough times ahead, brethren. There really is. Um, Holy Cross defense question: Have you seen Craig's Twitter? I really don't care about that kid. Um, honestly, I need to get a life. Busy uh, question: What do you think? Or why do you think the government moves the Easter holiday each year? Sometimes it's in March, sometimes April. Um, good question. Uh, I don't really know. To be honest, it's Easter is a pagan holiday, and um, it's kind of a high satanic holiday and things. Uh, Easter is not a scriptural thing. I don't. We don't mess with Easter um, at all for any reason. So why would they be moving it? I don't know. I know that the there's a weird kind of a thing of they how they'll go from okay there somebody put the link thank you Michael Silver I'll check it out um, oh yeah that painting oh uh, okay I'll go back here um, you know, the the holidays will go by you know like six weeks seven weeks I think like thirteen weeks or something between holidays um, so that's kind of an interesting thing there. Um, now, what was what was the question? Um, well, uh, I'll try to go back up here and find the thing. A question: Can you quickly Google the Jesus painting, brother Ryan? This girl again okay, says she gets visions from God. Told her to paint Jesus for the world. Uh, what do I think of that? Um, this painting of Jesus here, this Italian Prince of Peace canvas thing, um, give you a quick scripture on that. Uh, have to zip down to the bottom here. Um, Isaiah chapter 53, very simple, easy to debunk these Jesus paintings. Uh, and this is a good one to, to use on the Jews as well. They, they mess this all up. Um, Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid it as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Um, Jesus Christ was not a good-looking guy. So you see these paintings. And they're trying to make Jesus look like he's a real handsome guy and whatever. Nope. Sorry. And it's just the nature of the Lord to do that. Come down and just look like a real plain type of guy or whatever else. And there he is, God manifest in the flesh. You know, the devil uses the most attractive, the wealthiest, the hot, most highly educated people. You know, you worship those people, these celebrities. But God uses the bottom. He kind of works from the bottom of society up. And so it was only natural that the Lord would come and just be a, just a regular looking guy. He wasn't some good looking guy. So this thing of, well, you know, the Lord told me to paint this and stuff. Um, no, that, that guy there, uh -uh. no, I don't think so. That's not Jesus Christ. Um, so get back to the questions here if I can. Okay. Tony, question. Do you think the people who deny the mark will be forced off lands and forced in a vacant location? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, the book of Hebrews chapter 10. I'll show you that one real quick. Uh, uh, okay, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 33. Um, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used for ye had compassion of me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods 
knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring uh, substance. Um, I think that that uh, those Jews that go into the time of Jacob's trouble are going to have to take patiently the spoiling of their goods. Um, you see it in Nazi Germany. Um, they came in and they basically took away the homes of the rich Jews that were there. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to happen again. Um, uh, hard, rock, hard Rock 4040, I fly an Israeli flag along with my American flag in South Carolina, not the Jerusalem flag. Uh, if or, I guess am I wrong for doing that in the States? No, no, I don't think so. I don't personally fly the, the flag of the nation of Israel. You can kind of see over there. See if I can point to it there. That's the Jerusalem flag right there. That's the one I'll fly, not the uh, hexagram flag of the nation of Israel. <clears throat> um, you know, I support the nation of Israel. I support their right to exist as a nation over there, but I do not support the politics and whatever else. Oh, just to clear that up. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Mesa Boogie 2000 question. You, you teach the fourth dispensation is the three year public ministry of Christ, right? How does that coincide with Galatians 4, verses 4 through 5? Oh, boy. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. Um, uh, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because 4, oh, 4 through 5. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jesus was sent. He was. He came in under the law. Certainly, that's why Mary went and offered up, you know, the, the sacrifice there at the temple, um, the sin offering thing, the the turtle dove, I think it was. Um, you know, that's why he did, or that's you know, he came there under the the system of the law. So that is there, but it says, you know, Jesus says, "Law and the prophets were until John." Okay, so it wasn't, you know, Jesus Christ per se that the you know, when he was born, that brought an end to the law. It's just when when they started to preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand, the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, when that was being preached, then that was that was kind of a ending the law as far as you know um, the king is physically on the earth. And so, uh, at that point in time, I believe that that is a different dispensation because the Lord Jesus said, you know, the law and the prophets are until John, and since that time, the kingdom of heaven is preached. And every man presseth into it. I think is how the scripture goes there. I'm trying to remember a lot of this stuff by memory, you know. So please have some grace for me if I misquote it. But you know, so that little time period there where Jesus Christ is offering Himself, He's the Messiah. He's there offering Himself, and that's the big contention with the Jews. They'll say, well, He couldn't have been the Messiah because He didn't fulfill all the prophecies of the Messiah, and so all the prophecies have to be fulfilled by one man. At one time, and so Jesus, we reject, you know. Um, but you know, of course, they don't understand the scriptures that you know he's rejected, and, and later on, you know, he gets um, accepted as their Messiah. And I did study on that, so that's how I would answer that. Okay, let's see, go back to this. Um, Okay, there was one up there I saw. Where was it? Um, o N I F C S two S T U one two three. <laughs> um, can you be gay and go to heaven even if you love God and walk with Him? Uh, sure, if you're happy, yeah. Oh, you mean you know sodomite? Uh, no, I don't believe you can. I believe sodomy is uh, gay is happy in the, in the Bible. If you didn't get that, um, you know sodomy is something that's a very serious abomination in God's sight. Um, I would say if if somebody gets saved, if somebody who's a sodomite gets saved, 
and uh, they're still struggling with some of that stuff. And and you know they've come to the Lord, they're broken, they're a sinner, you know the whole thing. And and uh, and you know you mess up. You know, I mean, how many Christians look at sodomy, sodomy, pornography? You know, a lot a lot of men find it very attractive to see, you know, two women, you know, lesbianism and pornography and whatever else. Uh, you know, so it'd be hypocritical for Christian men to say, well, you know, um, you know, sodomy is this wicked abomination, but I get pleasure from it. And, you know, whatever uh, that stuff goes on a lot. But, uh, you know, if some Christian is truly born again and they mess up and they they do some kind of a sodomite type of thing, they're going to feel like dirt. They're going to feel lower than dirt. And if they if there's no repentance of that, and if they, they just continue to start to go into it, God's going to kill them and take them home. Um, I mean, the the guy had his father's wife in First Corinthians chapter five, and you know Paul says, you know, I turn him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So, um, you can do some pretty vile things as a Christian and still go to heaven. Um, Okay, JK Archives. Okay, I'm not going to get into that whole thing. That Craigan thing, whatever. I mean, it, my word. Let's let that thing go. Um, Brian Bailey asks, have you heard of Les Felsdick? If so, what are your thoughts on his ministry? Heard of him, but I haven't looked into him enough that I could comment on that. Um. Question. I've been trying to figure out why the Lord, I think, wrestled with Jacob in Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 through 32. <sighs> uh, again, that's a big study. I can't really get into that right now. Um, yeah. I always, I always thought to myself, you know, the thing of Jacob, I thought, man, he has to be fairly strong <laughs> to be able to wrestle with the angel of the Lord, essentially, you know. Uh, yeah, I agree, Brother Jeremy. To everybody out there, please stop posting stuff about this Craigan kid. He's a kid, my word. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I will say this, busy as far as the thing of uh, in the Old Testament, a lot of the stories that you're reading, uh, the Bible is such an intricate book, and you don't realize this till you'll study things years and years down the road, and you'll see how things tie in, and there's types, and God's trying to show something for the future. And, you know, you'll see that a lot. There's a lot of typology in the Old Testament, you know. Um, you know, Abraham says to Isaac, God, you know, God shall provide himself a lamb. I was saying God will provide him. I'm getting that mixed up. <laughs> but, you know, it's a type. Uh, the, the, the lamb that's slain when Adam and Eve are kicked out of the Garden of Eden. It's a type. There's a lot of things like that in the Old Testament. Uh Um, do I cry for the lost? Bray good Giddish. Do you cry for the lost? Um well, um, that depends. I mean, I don't just cry in general. There are certain people that are lost and and it and it greatly saddens me and it and, and I get very, very vexed in my soul and I and I have wept for lost people and I've prayed very fervently for some lost people, and I've seen people get saved uh, that I've prayed for. Other people it just doesn't seem like you can do much for them. Um, Christophe uh, Delespierre, Pierre, sorry if I'm butchering your name. Sir, so what do you think of university? I think it's a complete scam and a waste of time. Um, recently, Bloomberg um, put out an article, I think a few months ago, that uh, the total um, student debt that is uh, hasn't been paid in 90 days or something like that is $166 billion here in America. Um, total student loan debt is $2 trillion in this country. Um, the universities are going broke, and then they'll tell you how to make money. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, I'd stay away from universities. They're filled with atheists that hate God and whatever else. Um, Darren Dillon, question, have you got any more info on 6G since your last video? On it, I just read an article about cell phones being replaced by glasses and virtual reality holograms very soon. Thoughts? Yeah, they already have that stuff, the Google glasses and, and some of this other stuff. 
yeah, augmented reality is what they want. The destruction of free will. I haven't really, I mean, there's things we're seeing in line with that, but you know, I haven't really done it enough to really come out with a video on it. Um, uh, um, how do I feel about Joel Osteen? Um, Joel Osteen is a, is a religious con man. He likes to make money and he does it very well. You know, and he goes over and he visits with the Pope in Rome and things. He's just, he's another one of them that it's so common. They, these guys will do that. All right. Do we have any more questions here that I've missed? Hard Rock 4040, is there one good short statement to plant a seed in a Muslim? Um, talk about the deity of Jesus Christ. That's what I would do. Say, you know, Jesus Christ is God fully and completely. Muhammad couldn't make that claim. Um, or better yet, uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. That's a good one. I'll turn there and read it. Turn in your King James Bible to 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. This is a real good one to mark down. This works on a lot of different people. Um, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And just say, do you have that promise in your religion? To a Catholic, to a Muslim, to whatever. Can you say that you know you have eternal life because of written scriptures? So... All right. Uh, KGV Bible 1611. Brian Dunley, what about wearing small crosses as a necklace? A lot of people say it's a graven image or some kind of deal, whatever else. I don't see a huge problem with it. I personally don't do it. Uh, uh, nor, you know, my wife doesn't wear a cross necklace or anything else. Um, yeah, I, I tend to stay away from that stuff, honestly. Jerry O'Sullivan, will you do another video on the last Reformation, Torben Sundergaard? I actually saw he was on the 700 Club not long ago, and I thought, oh, boy, they're they're kind of puffing that guy. Hey, he's something else, old Torben Sundergaard. -la 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 -la. <laughs> he's a nut. Um, all right, let's see. All right. What does the Bible mean by famine of the word? That's back in the book of Amos. Um, I'll get back there real quick. Oops. Don't buy it there. Amos chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Um, very true for today. Uh, there's not many good preachers out there. I do not like to be considered by many that I'm one of the last few remaining Bible-believing preachers and things out there. I don't like that. I never have. I would love to be able to point people to hundreds of preachers out there that are preaching the word and standing by the book. And it's a great sadness to me to, to have to go against so many ministries after recommending them. And, and I see things that are just too heretical. I think, oh man, I just, I can't recommend them anymore. Um, the famine, uh, where, there's some debate whether that when it's going to come in totally. I mean, we're not really in a famine at in the sense of that we can't find it. It's kind of a pro progression, in other words, from verse 11 to 12. Uh, the Lord is sending the famine, but it's not 
fully here yet. And I believe that when the catching up happens is when it's going to be fully there that they're wondering from, you know, C to C and from the north even to the east, um, trying to seek the word of the Lord and they're not going to find it. So, um, okay. Tony, question, what point of protecting the Bible will be going too far? Um, not really sure where you're going with that one, to be honest. What point of protecting the Bible will be going too far? Not really sure what you mean on that. Sorry about that. Uh, what are my th JK archives were? Uh, what's your thoughts on crucifixes? I believe they're satanic idols because it shows Jesus still suffering. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, the Bible talks about curses as everyone that hangeth on a tree. Um, Jesus was made a curse for us. Um, so to keep him on the cross, you're just saying that he's a curse. And, um, he died on the cross and he was buried and he rose again. And he's not going to go back on the cross again. So, yeah. Tony B. Boudry, Boudry, do you have other Christians in your area that you meet with? If not, how do you apply the ones, one another's? That Paul exhorts us to do relationships online are not the same. I don't understand why relationships online are not the same. Um, we do meet with different Christians in the area, but you know, if if I call somebody on the the phone that lives an hour north of me, and I talk to somebody on the internet that I'm in contact with, how is one less than the other? I don't really understand that. It's this church building mindset that you have to meet every Sunday with people and worship with them and all this stuff. Um, yeah, I have kind of an issue with that. As far as meeting with a lot of people, uh, you know, that's really not what we're called into doing. You know, us personally, um, we've done the whole thing of meeting with other believers and, and things, um, house church type of deal. And, you know, what the Lord has called us to do is he's called me to, to put together videos for the body of Christ. And that's what I do. To the best of my ability and it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of research so um having a lot of fellowship with the brethren is just not real possible right now for us that's something um you know it's something that we'd like to do in the future actually meet with people face to face uh, we just don't have the ability to right now because of our property situation um As far as talking on Skype, Aaron, um, that's, again, not very easy to do for me. There are a lot of people that, you know, would love to be in contact with me. And uh, it's it's our schedules are really weird. Going to be going to bed early tonight, leaving early tomorrow, you know, to work and things. So um, uh, big question. What's the toughest thing you ever had to interpret from the scripture? <laughs> Uh, a lot of the questions I get on some of these things here. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, oh boy. Um, the book of Ezekiel, I would say, is probably the toughest book for me. There's a lot of prophecy stuff that goes into the time of Jacob's trouble and even beyond that. And a lot of it is just whew, over my head. Um, question, my girlfriend wears makeup. Is this sinful? We love the Lord and I just want her to be always submitting to what, he wants for her and her life. Uh, well, as far as the thing of makeup is concerned, um, you know, makeup is toxic. That's something that you have to understand. First and foremost, it's based again on petrochemicals. There's a whole bunch of other things. Um, coal tar dyes and, and whatever else. Not real good to be putting on your body. It's a lot of it's carcinogenic cancer causing. In other words, so a woman putting it on her body uh, or face or whatever else. Um, yeah. I can't say it's openly a sin in terms of, you know, you're going to go to hell because you put lipstick on or something as a woman. No, I, I can't make that argument, but it's just a dumb thing to do. Quite frankly, you're changing your appearance. Um, Touch KJV Bible Believer. 
one quick question. I'm studying internet technology in college, and to be honest, I want to stop, but I'm not sure if I should stop immediately because of the way it's going, it's it's heading right into the, um, you know, all the autonomous technology type of stuff and augmented reality and mark of the beast type of stuff. Yeah, get out of it. Um, actually, I have a brother that I know of that uh, he's also in the IT world and he wants out. So, man, get out, get away from that stuff. It'd be better working at some, you know, blue collar type of work than in the IT field. Okay. Probably going to go till about five o'clock here, then I'll have to quit. Okay, I, I guess I'm seeing here, Tim, you're right about Tony. Uh, there is no going too far to protect your, K, your KJV. Yeah, I would agree with that. If that's what the question was, going too far to protect the King James Bible, um, don't ever let them take your Bible from you. No way. Um, this is a precious, precious possession. Christians died for this in the past. Don't ever let them take your King James Bible. Um, you know, yeah. Roger Pinch, do you have any, uh, Brother Brian, do you have any videos on the angel of the Lord? No, I don't. I've mentioned it. Um, but the angel of the Lord is, is, uh, Paul wrote at one point in time about, uh, the angel of the Lord appeared to him that night. Whose I am and whom I serve. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Um, question. Where will saved Christians, Jews, and Gentiles be after the DW Great White Throne Judgment, I guess is what you're saying there. Um, I've heard the Gentiles will colonize the universe, etc. Yeah, I've, I've heard some of that theory stuff. I, there's, I don't see any scripture for it, to be quite frank with you. Um, yeah. You know, uh, okay. Deuteronomy chapter twenty two, verse twenty through twenty nine. What does it mean? Well, let me get there. Deuteronomy twenty two, verse twenty eight through twenty nine. Um, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay on hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. It's God's answer for making a man's life miserable that uh, basically fornicates with a young woman and forces himself on her. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a lot of that stuff in the Old Testament. You got to understand there. I see you say you're not a Christian. Um, you got to understand that this book is not all about everything in it is good and wonderful and lovely and, and happy. Um, this book is showing man how depraved he is and man how wicked he is. That's why a lot of atheists reject this book because this book is honest about man. Most other religious books tell a lot of very happy, nice stories and things like that and tell you how good you are. Uh, this book tells you how bad you are and how bad man has always been. So you get a guy that rapes a woman and they say, okay, you want to rape her? She's going to be your wife. And she's going to, you know, talk about anniversaries. That's going to be a little bit awkward for you in the future there. <laughs> but a good payment. Hey, you want to, you want to take the, the responsibility of raping some girl? Okay. Then you're going to marry her and you're going to stay with her. Can't get divorced. Oh boy. That'd make people think, you know, in the future. Um, okay, let me see here. Uh, JK Archives, a uh, question. What's your thoughts on the pro-life movement? I heard it's mostly Catholics. Um, yeah, very, very Catholic type of a thing. The whole pro-life pro -life movement. I'm against uh, abortion, obviously. I, abortion is murder. And I don't agree with uh, Peter Ruckman and the, um, 
you know, I don't believe that uh, abortion, you know, is, is you're not actually murdering the baby because the baby hasn't taken light, you know, breath yet. So then it's not technically living. I don't agree with that. I think that's nonsense. Um, so. Um, Zeppelin, Zeppelin freak Hayes. Why do the Jews get the worst judgment than, or why do they get worse judgment than we do at judgment day? Because they had um, so much, the Lord did so much for them and uh, they rejected Jesus Christ. And so it's going to be worse with them. Uh, you know, American, uh, American people are going to have a much worse time at the judgment because uh, there's Bible believers like myself. There's many Bible believers out there in this country, many ministries and things like that that you can find the gospel and you choose to reject it. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. Um, so man, there it goes again. Keep looking over and I see a question that goes doop, doop, and jumps up like that. All these comments. I'm sure glad I don't have many more, you know, uh, a lot more, uh, um, subscribers because good night man if I had like a hundred thousand subscribers it'd be terrible <laughs> I'm glad I don't have that many I still I still wish that a lot of people would unsubscribe from me these you know weird people that just you know stalk my videos and things I wish there would be like this mass uh, massive unsubscribing day or something where people would just unsubscribe they always threaten it but they never do it bugs me <laughs> now I'd like to get down to you know like maybe you know, two or three hundred really faithful Bible believing Christians. That would be awesome. I'd love that. Get a lot of work done. Um, Jennifer Murphy, what do you think about the Sanhedrin and the temple? But I'm assuming you mean the rebuilding of the third temple thing and the Sanhedrin over there in Israel and, and whatever. Uh, they're, I think that they're making some progress on the whole deal. And, and uh, it's there. There's going to be all kinds of Masonic stuff in, in with it and all kinds of wickedness and everything else. Um, it's evil, but it's prophesied and, uh, uh, the Lord brings back the Jews in unbelief. Okay. And they're doing all kinds of wicked things. And, and basically most of the Jews, almost all of them are going to get wiped out in the time of Jacob's trouble. So it's going to be a bad situation. Yeah. Ed is a subscriber to Brian's channel. No joke. Yeah. I didn't realize that he's, he's there somewhere, you know, whatever. Oh, pale Eddie. You know, um, uh, uh, JK Archives question Have you heard of Acts 17 apologetics? Yes, I have. Don't know much about them. Um, comely man is drinking alcohol a sin, or is it drunkenness? Drunkenness is a sin. Uh, not out alcohol. Uh, um. Okay. Uh, there's someone who's claiming to be you, I think, brother. Now that that Brian Dellinger or whatever else, I've seen him in the comments. I think that's actually his real name, by the way. There, so you don't have to block him or anything. Okay, I guess he already was. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think he is actually. I think that's actually his legitimate name. Um, we we've had that happen so many times. So I apologize if that is your real name. Michael M. Question, what KGB can you recommend? I've seen your video about it, but still, a Bible's from LCB. Local Church Bible Publishers, sometimes names like um, 215 E3T. What Bible is good? Uh, Cambridge. I like Cambridge. This is a Cambridge um, wide margin. You can see there. Um, has the wide margins. It has uh, notes in the back. Areas where you can you can 
note paper in the back like that. You can see it. Yeah, I have my notes and things there. Um, this is a good Bible. Um, but, you know, local church Bible publishers, church Bible publishers. Uh, there's some others now that are coming out. Um, Uh, Acts 17 apologist is David Wood, a brave man who challenges Islam. Well, if he doesn't use the King James Bible, then I don't consider him to be brave. Um, yeah, the uh, Danik's question is the red placed text placed in the KJV Bible um, for when Jesus speaks placed in by the translators or put in later on. It was put in later on. Mainly ask, be, asking because when the angel of the Lord speaks, it's not read. Yeah, you know, there's there's some issues there or whatever else. It's just it's trying to make it a little bit easier to understand. Um, I actually have, uh, I think this one here is not a red letter edition, if I remember correctly. Yeah, my, my King James Bible is not a red letter edition. So not a big deal. You can tell from the, the context when Jesus is speaking. Um, not a real big issue. Okay, I'm just going down to the bottom here. Tony, question, your thoughts on people selling Bibles? Saw a lot of shows that call themselves followers of Christ and want 5,000 for a Bible. Um, I don't have a problem with people, you know, publishing Bibles and, and selling them. But if they're asking 5,000, um, you know, then that's a problem. Uh Okay. Um, JK Archives question. Do you plan on to do any stuff on the street preaching movement? They are very wicked. Yeah, they are. And I already did. I did a live stream with uh, Brother Jeremy on it. Um, uh, the comely man, why is interracial marriage a sin? Um, well, uh, definitely so in the Old Testament because God is dealing with the nation of Israel. The Messiah is going to be coming from the nation of Israel. So the devil's trying to mess them up. Um, mess up their kindred, um, their, you know, their ethnicity. And uh, the Antichrist system cannot come in unless you bring people together. All nations have to become one. Um, that's why I'm against interracial marriage. Um, have I heard of William, a William N. Branham? Uh, name sounds somewhat familiar, but no. Um, not really. I don't really know much about him. Alfenstein, what's your views on tabletop role-playing games like uh, Risk? I guess you would be talking about or things like that. I don't really play any games like that. So, um, uh, Brother Jacob, I have a random question. Have you used alcohol-based markers? Um, I don't really know, honestly. I'm not really sure what what the uh, chemical composition of the markers I use is. Um, hmm. So, um. The, the thing about the Antichrist being the far right system, the alt right deal and all that other stuff, it was called the devil's triangle. You can look that up. It's basically um, Roman Catholicism, like pre-Vatican II, the Baptist IFB, you know, type of thing. And then alt right, I think is how I had it. Um, Mm 
Okay. All right. Well, I think that's probably going to be it. It's after five o'clock now, five o two. <laughs> Sorry to everybody about the thing I'm messing up there. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, at the beginning, I'm still learning this stuff. You know, the, the internet thing just, ugh, you know, um, so have I heard of Reuben Israel? Yes, very wicked man, very profane, very wicked man, lost. Um, yeah, um, sister, uh, busy. Yeah, she. It, some of that stuff is kind of becoming almost like we need to read a book, or write a book, rather than make a video because it's just really, really, really detailed. Um, yeah. Uh, I think, it, like I said, in the future, I'm just going to have to do a live stream and just say, you know, ask questions in a video and then I'll go back through and read the questions because I, I feel so bad. I know a lot of you have been asking questions and you get frustrated because I'm not answering, but it's it just it goes real fast like that. I can't get to them all. Um, what was another? Was there one? Um uh, Update on housing, ministry, location, building, time frames, etc. Um, right now, just to let everybody know, uh, we still have a lot of snow. If you saw the video, the, the cooking video, you can see out the window of the school bus that you know there at our property, and the snow is still. Some of the snow piles are five feet high, and um, snow on the ground is still probably two to three feet of snow. It's about fifty. It was fifty-five degrees earlier today. And a little bit of rain and so that's going to take the snow down but we don't want it to go down too quickly because then you get flooding really bad flooding and we don't want that so um, it's kind of a weird thing because we're kind of saying you know we want the snow to melt as quick as possible because we want to get to our property and build you know we can't even see the ground right now um, but if it melts too quick then we have flooding so uh, we're, there's actually a, a little brook right to the north of this place here called dead brook and that our neighbor was telling us older guy that grew up right next door he was telling us that uh he actually saw the water up you know just almost up into the house before in spring fall so don't really want it to happen like that so but anyhow um the as far as looking for an update on a new office it's really strange. Um, there's definitely some spiritual warfare stuff going on with the, the new office deal. Um, this uh, area up here, northern Maine, when you put up a, a house for sale, it takes about 10 years on average for it to sell. Um, there's not a lot of people that come here. I mean, literally the area where we moved to, it's never been more than 300 people living there at any time in the last essentially 200 years. Um, this is not a real big area where people move to and uh, so it takes a long time for places to sell and anything um, any house that's within our price range that's in the immediate vicinity of where our property's at any place that would be in that that price range uh, where we could you know buy it forty thousand dollars or less which we don't have that right now you know we're still waiting for that um, uh, but anything that that was in that price range all these houses sold um literally some places that we were interested in um they just all sold or were taken off the market so there's there's definitely some weird stuff going on um and when we sold our property that we originally had in littleton uh it was it was weird because the bank just stalled and stalled and stalled and we started thinking what in the world's going on my wife checked into it and the the um the the bank was just filled with jesuit trained people i don't know if there was any scheming there or not no idea but um yeah it, it, i don't know what's going on um there's really no place right now that would work for us and we still need to to get more money coming in um so 
that's where we're at right now with the whole uh, ministry office type of a thing. We just really want to be able to um, get things done on our property right now. And uh, that's what we're praying for. So please, yeah, thank you. Uh, keep praying for the office thing. Um, it's just a, it's a huge amount of driving that we do on a regular basis. It takes a lot of time. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I will, Jeremy. Definitely. Um, wasting time as a Christian. Uh, the Bible talks about redeeming the time. Let me, let me just close with that scripture. <sighs> I normally wear this, know where this is, but right now my brain is going into mush mode because uh, of, I think it's in Ephesians. Um, yeah, Ephesians chapter 5. We'll close with this. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools. Remember that tomorrow. Don't walk like an atheist, okay, on April Fool's Day, um, but as wise. Um, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Uh, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Um you need to understand what the will of the Lord is. Your purpose, on, and you know, what is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of life? To get to know your creator, you know, and I mean salvation there, and then to understand what his will is for your life. Um, I'm not going to preach everybody, that everybody out there should, uh, you know, be just like me and whatever else. No, God's will for your life is going to be different than what it is for my life. Um, we are different members within the body of Christ. Uh, we each have different roles and different things and whatever else. Um, and you need to find out what that will is for your life and then redeem the time. Um, you're going to get to heaven someday and you're going to realize my work, my service is over. Uh, and I'm going to have to give an account of how I spent my time. Um, the judgment seat of Christ, understand when we get to see the Lord, it ain't going to be this little running and hugging and oh, Jesus, you know, no, 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 no. The disciple whom Jesus loved was on his face, scared to death when he saw Jesus, the glorified, you know, God, the, you know, almighty God. It is going to be a fearful thing. And he is not judging our works with, you know, flowers and daisies. It's fire that tries our works. and. Uh, there's going to be a lot of suffering loss there where you're going to realize how many times that you could have served the Lord, how many, how many chances to serve the Lord and you just wasted it. My word. Um, it's one of the reasons why I'm looking forward to getting off grid, to be very honest, because um, our property where we're going to be going to is off grid because it's so tempting to me. I mean, I have so many different sermon outlines that I'm writing down and Lord shows me things and, and oh yeah, I should do a sermon on that. I should do a sermon on this. And I get on the internet and it's just look at that video. Hey, check this out. Look at this. Look at that. Hey, oh, that's right. I want to look up this information, whatever else. And I'll spend, you know, a couple hours sometimes and just wasting my time. And man, um, we need to redeem the time, brethren, because the days are evil. And uh the thing that's the the preservation of a country is up to the righteous men and women in it don't ever forget that um any kind of republican democrat politics call your congressman all this stuff is a waste of time complete waste of time um you know a man of understanding will preserve the state of a country this nation of america should have been judged a very 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 long time ago and it hasn't been judged yet because there are still righteous people here there are still people that are trying to get the work of the Lord done, trying to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and my prayer is that all of us can stand firm until the Lord says, come up hither, until the catching up of the body of Christ. That's my prayer right there. So anyhow, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, we're going to close down here. And... Uh,
I'm going to close with a word of prayer here. So, all right. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray, Lord, uh, for the viewers of this channel. Lord, those that are saved, I pray that they would stand fast and not back down, that they would stay with your word. And uh, I pray, Lord, about those those times of, of wasting time, Lord, that our flesh is so tempted by so many distractions by this world, Lord. And, and um, I pray that they don't fall into the thing of the cares of this world springing up and choking the word and becoming unfruitful, Lord. And I pray that all of us would remember that our home is in heaven and that we need to lay up treasures in heaven and uh, serve you to the best of our abilities, Lord. Help us with those struggles, Lord. And, and I know that there's lost people right now that are watching. And I pray for them, Lord. It, it, it's I know that that this thing called Christianity is such a mess right now in this country. And, and it's so hard to understand uh, as a lost person, um, understand how to fit into that whole thing. And, and they see different people, different beliefs and whatever else. But I pray that they would just focus on you and not on Christians, not on churches and denominations and whatever else religious rules and whatever but that they would want to know you as their creator and uh, that they would give up this whatever wicked sinful things that they're holding on to that they they just i, I pray lord that they would come to you as sinners and um that they wouldn't have to be totally broken and, and just destroyed before they finally call upon you to be saved i pray lord that you would humble them and um, that they would understand that there's not much time left before your judgment hits. When the body of Christ leaves, Lord, that judgment's going to hit like it's never hit before. I pray for them that they get saved, Lord, please. And I ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. That's going to be it. And uh, I guess we'll see everybody. In the next video, like I said, next time I do a live stream, it's I'm just gonna have to do you know, get questions some other way because I can't keep up with this thing over here. But uh, I just pray everybody has a good night, and it's always fun talking with the brethren. And and you know, if you're if you're lost, I love you, I really do. I don't I don't hate lost people. Um, I want to see you get saved, and um, that's gonna be it. So. I'll see everybody in the next video.